Hey everyone, Noah Zerby here. This is one of a series of videos exploring American politics from a comparative or international perspective. In this video, we examine the ideas of American exceptionalism. The idea that the United States is inherently different from or unique among countries of the world is often described by the concept of American exceptionalism. And that idea is a deeply rooted component of American political culture. In this video, we'll examine exactly what is meant by American exceptionalism, explore its roots in U.S. history, and consider the impact of the concept or the way of thinking on American politics and public policy. Political scientists sometimes use the term American exceptionalism in a few different ways. First, it's sometimes used to express the unique historical trajectory of the United States as a country. Unlike the states of Europe and Asia, the United States is a relatively young nation, called the First New Nation by Seymour Martin Lipset, with its own unique ideology. The idea of American exceptionalism is sometimes used to capture that sense. The Scottish political scientist Richard Rose used the term in this way when he wrote that America marches to a different drummer. Its uniqueness is explained by any or all of a variety of reasons – history, size, geography, political institutions, and culture. Explanations of the growth of government in Europe are not expected to fit the American experience, and vice versa. Given this meaning's focus on the differences between the United States and other countries of the world, particularly those of Western Europe, we might more accurately refer to this vision of American exceptionalism as American distinctiveness, or even American uniqueness. The second use of American exceptionalism is an outgrowth of the first. If the former suggests that the United States was subject to a unique set of historical factors that made its political and economic trajectory different than those of other countries, then the second use of the term suggests that this historical pattern made the United States not just different from other countries of the world, but superior to them. In this sense, American exceptionalism is closely connected to nationalist visions of the United States that places the country in a unique position to expand and spread its system of governance around the world. This was the vision of American exceptionalism that, operating under a vision of manifest destiny, saw the United States spread westward in the 19th century, occupying and annexing land belonging to Native Americans, and later purchasing Alaska, annexing Hawaii, taking control of Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Philippines after the Spanish-American War. Because of the connection of this vision of American exceptionalism and American expansionism, we might also refer to this as a more imperial version of American exceptionalism. This vision of American exceptionalism continues even today, perhaps exemplified most clearly in Dick Cheney and Liz Cheney's book Exceptional, Why the World Needs a Powerful America, in which the Cheneys argue that the United States is the most powerful, good, and honorable nation in the history of mankind, the exceptional nation. We are, as Lincoln said, the last best hope on earth. The U.S. is not one or more indistinguishable entity on the world stage, but has, an essential, has been essential to the preservation of progress and freedom, and those who lead us in the years ahead must remind us, as Roosevelt, Kennedy, and Reagan did, of the special role we play. We are, in fact, exceptional. This sense of the United States as a special country with unique, perhaps even God-given responsibilities to shape the world in its own image is deeply, if often implicitly, part of America's vision of itself, shaping both popular culture and political identities. Think, for example, of all the action movies in which the American heroes defend the world against alien invasion, terrorist threats, nuclear war, or other forms of Armageddon. In the film Independence Day, when President Thomas Whitmore urges the world to come together to collectively address the common threat posed by an alien invasion, he argues that it is fate that the fight takes place on the 4th of July, and that, as a result, Independence Day will no longer be just an American holiday, but a global one. It's not just a statement of American superiority, but it's an exaltation to the rest of the world to be more like the United States. And one could point to dozens of other films that paint a very similar picture. Picture. Or more practically, look at public opinion polling. The Pew Research Center regularly surveys Americans on their belief about the role of the U.S. in the world. In their surveys, we regularly find that about a quarter to a third of all Americans believe that the United States stands above other countries in the world. They're shown in dark blue here. 
about half of all Americans believe that the United States is one of the greatest countries in the world, along with others. They're represented in gray. And less than a quarter of all Americans believe that there are other countries that are better than the United States. They're shown in green here. Now, a couple of items worth quickly noting on this chart. First, the percent of Americans viewing the United States as superior to all other countries has declined over time, while the percent stating there are other countries better than the U.S. has gradually risen. And second, younger Americans tend to be less likely to embrace the idea of American exceptionalism. In their most recent survey, Pew found that while 24% of all Americans said the U.S. stood above all other countries, only 15% of those aged 18 to 29 believed this, and only 18% of those aged 30 to 49 did. Those groups were also far more likely to say that there are other countries better than the United States than older Americans were. The third meeting of American exceptionalism tends to focus on the position of the United States in the international system and was articulated by the French foreign minister and later president Valérie Destin as in the 1960s when Destin referred to this as America's exorbitant privilege. The criticism pointed most directly at the benefits the United States garners from the use of the U.S. dollar as the global reserve currency, effectively allowing it to skirt many of the rules that might apply to our trading partners or to other countries in the global economy. But this criticism goes much deeper. More broadly, it captures the idea that the United States sometimes views itself as exempt from or exceptional to the rules of the international system. It sometimes abides by the decisions of the United Nations or the International Court of Justice, and it sometimes ignores them. It sometimes seeks to work with other countries to achieve collective solutions to global problems, and it sometimes goes alone and ignores the other countries. This third and perhaps most literal sense of American exceptionalism is rooted in the idea that the United States is immune or exempt from the broader rules and structural forces of the international system. The idea of American exceptionalism, at a minimum, in its form that the United States has a unique history and a special or important role to play in the world, is a long-standing feature of American politics on both the left and the right. We've already noted former Vice President Dick Cheney's use of the term, but we commonly see the idea expressed elsewhere in the political system. Former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Madeleine Albright used it in a similar way to Cheney, stating that we are America, we are the indispensable nation. We stand tall and we see further than other countries. And President Donald Trump's vision of America first represents, in this sense, just another avenue for a similar sentiment. Indeed, the idea of American exceptionalism has been frequently evoked by presidents from Ronald Reagan to Barack Obama, from John Kennedy to George W. Bush. It's a common theme in American political discourse. The United States is the empire of liberty, the shining city on the hill, the last best hope, or the leader of the free world. Such visions cast America's values, political system, and history as unique and worthy of admiration. They suggest that the United States is destined to play a distinctively positive role in the world. But as Stephen Walt reminds us in a special issue of the Journal of Foreign Policy, the idea of American exceptionalism is largely a myth. Indeed, according to Walt, although the United States possesses certain unique qualities from high levels of religiosity to a political culture that privileges international individual freedom, uh, the conduct of U.S. foreign policy has largely been determined by its relative power and inherently competitive nature of international politics. By focusing on their supposedly exceptional qualities, Americans blind themselves to the way that they're a lot like every one else. This unchallenged faith in American exceptionalism makes it harder for Americans to understand why others are less enthusiastic about U.S. dominance, often alarmed by U.S. policies, and frequently irritated by what they see as U.S. hypocrisy, whether the subject is the possession of nuclear weapons, conformity with international law, or America's tendency to condemn the conduct of others while ignoring its own failings. Ironically, U.S. foreign policy would probably be more effective if Americans were less convinced of their own unique virtues and less eager to proclaim them.
So what do you think? Is American exceptionalism a misguided myth, as Walt asserts? Or is there something unique about the United States that distinguishes it from other countries? Share your thoughts in the comments section below, and thanks for watching. Bye.